Welcome, E4 Family Church. I want to thank everyone who joined us for our Easter service last Sunday. Whether online or in person, we love you and we appreciate you. I want to say a special thank you to our volunteers who came to love and to serve the church. Thank you so much. Well, our next in-person service is just around the corner, Sunday, May 1st at 11 a.m. at Lake Ridge High School. Don't miss this time where we join together as a family to worship, take communion, to hear a word from the Lord and to fellowship one with another. Don't miss this time. Well, today concludes our series as we've been reading through the Gospel of Mark. If you've missed any part of this series, I want to invite you to look at our website at our On Demand section or on our YouTube channel. E4 Kids, your worship service starts right now at e4familychurch.com. If you haven't already, I want to invite you to worship the Lord through your giving at e4familychurch.com. Well, it's time to pray, and I want to pray for you. If you have any prayer requests, please leave it in the comments section or contact our church so that someone on our team can get back with you. Well, let's pray. God, we are so thankful for who you are. God, we love you so much. And we thank you for loving us first and drawing us to you, God. Lord, I just lift up my brothers and sisters who may be suffering today. God, I pray that you would be a very present help at the mention of your name. God, I pray that they would call upon your name in their time of need, Lord. God, I pray for those who may be sick in their bodies. I pray that you would bring healing to them, God, that you would come and you would minister to them, Lord God, right where they are, that you would walk with them, that you would talk to them right in the middle of their pain and their suffering, God, that you would bring them through this, God, with a renewed energy, with a renewed zeal for you. And God, we just lift up our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine, God. We pray that you would be in this situation, that you would be there present with them, Lord God, with your children, God. That you would be there showing your mercy, showing your compassion, and showing your love for your people. We ask for your help, Lord God. And we know that you are very present in every situation that we walk through. So, Lord, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.
Welcome to the family. I hope you had the opportunity to look at last week's message. And if you were there in person, we had such a great time. But today we're going to be wrapping up the Gospel of Mark. Uh, I've enjoyed this series. I'm looking forward to the next series. But just to make sure we're all on the same page as we wrap up today, I want to just do a quick recap on what we talked about last week. Like celebrating Easter is great, but knowing why we celebrate Easter is more important. Important. And it's because of Act One, the purpose of the resurrection. The reason why we celebrate the resurrection is because there was a need for the resurrection. That back in Genesis 3, Adam sinned. And because of Adam's sin, mankind was eternally separated from God, from our Creator. Because of Adam's sin, spiritual and physical death entered our planet and our bodies. Because of Adam's sin, Death and destruction entered our world. It's why all of this is around. Don't blame evil on God. It's because we partnered with the enemy and did what God said not to do, that death and destruction entered our world. And number four, the reason why we celebrate the resurrection, the purpose of the resurrection, the need for the resurrection is because we lost our home, that God desired for us to live with him. We were created in his image and likeness to be his representatives on this earth and to walk with him in the cool of day, here with him in the garden. But because of sin, we got evicted. And that led us to act two, the prediction of the resurrection, that back in Genesis three, God said himself what he was going to do. He says, listen, Satan, you did not win. You think you won because you caused those who I created in my image and likeness to stumble, but a day is coming when they're going to have a child and that child's going to grow. And when he does, he'll bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. Friends, Jesus and the prophets predicted the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We know that in the New Testament, all four gospels record Jesus predicting his death, burial, and resurrection. It's so amazing because not only did he predict his death, but Jesus also planned his birth. Hey, Mary, I want you to be my mom. Hey, Joseph, I want you to help raise me. I mean, such an incredible, so amazing. But it's not just that he planned his, his death, but he also planned his resurrection. No one can do that. And that leads us to act three, the power of the resurrection. So powerful. Jesus defeated death, which is great news for us. And that leads us to act four, the promise of the resurrection. That because Jesus didn't stay dead, he says all of us who belong to him, put our hope in him, our trust in him, that we too won't stay dead. We're looking forward, not just to the past and what took place in the life of Jesus, but to towards the future and what's going to take place in the life of us. And because Jesus defeated death, mankind has been set free from the bondage of sin. The friends, we're not looking at the cross as our answer, but at the empty grave that Jesus didn't stay dead. Mankind can now be eternally reunited with God, our creator. And spiritual and physical life now is available to all of us who believe in Jesus, who trust in Jesus. And we can look forward to our new home to be with our God like it was supposed to be in the beginning when there was no way. Jesus is the way. And that leads us to today's focus. As we talk about the Gospel of Mark, part four, Jesus is alive. My question for all of us is now what? Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that we celebrate Resurrection Day every day. But Father, I pray that you would use me today to help us to understand what we are to do with this powerful truth and this knowledge. That knowledge is not power in and of itself if it is not utilized, if it's not grabbed a hold of. I pray that you would use me today to speak to everyone listening. Old, young, men, women, child, Father, I thank you for this truth that you desire to impart today. Holy Spirit, come. Speak to our hearts. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, the first thing I want you to know is what took place, right? So when we talk about the resurrection and it's wonderful and we celebrate and we wear nice clothes and eat nice food, but I want you to think about it from the perspective of what took place in particular in the gospel of Mark. And I want you to realize and remember what we said in week one, that the gospel of Mark was written by John Mark, but it was actually the account of Peter, that this very easily could have been called the gospel of Peter because Peter was the one telling John Mark all of these details. And what's extraordinary about that is Peter does not represent himself well in this gospel, that every time he came up short, he made sure that John Mark wrote it down. And as we get closer and closer to the actual crucifixion of Jesus. They're having dinner together and they're having a great time. And it's this meal that we call the Last Supper that was the Passover. And they're hanging out, having a great time and, and singing songs and hymns and feeling good. And, and Jesus is saying, I no longer call you servants, but friends. And he's inviting them into this beautiful relationship. And then he starts talking about death again. And then he says, listen, they're going to come and they're going to hurt me and all of you are going to run from me. And, and Peter says, hold up, Jesus. I was trucking with you and I understand that these other guys are a bunch of cowards, but I will never leave you. I'm your friend. Remember, I'm the rock. I'm the one that, that said to you, nobody else said it. I said it. Thou art the Christ. I won't deny you. And Jesus says to Peter, before the cock crows three times, Peter, you will deny me. And so I want you to put this in context. While we celebrate Easter, we're like, wow, Resurrection Day. Peter had put that out of his mind at the present time because what took place for him was he shamed himself. He dishonored and, and broke his promise to Jesus. Because when they came and they were in the process of crucifying Jesus, Peter realized, oh my God, they are hurting this man and they are doing horrible things to him. I want no part of that. And on three separate occasions, they asked Peter, aren't you one of his disciples? Weren't you with him? And Peter's thinking, oh, Lord, if they find out I was with him, I'm going to suffer the same fate. And I'm not ready to die. And Peter denies Jesus not once, not twice, but true to what Jesus said three times. And it's recorded for us in the Gospel of Mark and in the other Gospels. You read about this. But Peter makes sure, write that down, write it down. And so while we're excited about Resurrection Day, all Peter can think about is whether he resurrects or not, I've denied him. I am no longer worthy to be counted as one of his disciples. And so Peter and all of the disciples, all of the apostles, all of these men that walked with Jesus for years, for three years, have gone into hiding and they are scared to death. And so when we think about Resurrection Sunday, we're excited. What they're thinking about is, I hope nobody knocks on this door. I hope nobody finds me. I hope they don't discover where we are. They are afraid. But what are we supposed to do now that we know that Jesus is alive? Now what? Should we be afraid? <laughs> no, friends. The first thing we need to do is we need to go and see for ourselves. This is what we learn in Mark 16, 1. While all these guys, these strong men are afraid because they don't want to suffer the same fate that Jesus did. Listen to what happens here. It says, now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, it's a lady, Mary, the mother of James, a lady, and Salmone brought spices, another lady, that they might come and anoint him. Who's him? Jesus. They're going to anoint their Lord's body. They're like, listen, I, I still believe. I'm still holding out. I still got faith. I got to go see for myself. Verse 2. Very early in the morning, on the day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. 
And they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the doors of the tomb? You see, they're so committed and so serious. They're asking themselves, who can we find to do this? And they're, they're asking each other because the, the, the men have gone into hiding and Peter is gone someplace crying and he's so sad about what He's done. He's betrayed his Lord. And the other men are hiding because they don't want to suffer the same fate that Jesus did. So they're like, who's going to roll this stone away? But listen to what happens in verse four. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. For it was very large. They're like, what? Who did this? They go from kind of being excited and kind of planning out, hey, are you going to, who's going to do it? Or I don't know. To, who did it? Mark 16, 5, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right hand, and they were alarmed. They were like, hold on, hold on, who this? What you doing? They went to go see. They remembered what Jesus had said. He said, listen, on the third day, I'm going to resurrect. So these ladies are going and they're thinking, listen, either Jesus is alive or Jesus is dead. But either way, we still are holding out our faith and no one is going to let us go into hiding. No one's going to keep me from my savior. They're coming up with a plan as they're going, going, listen, we're going to move that stone. If the three of us have to use our weight, we're going to use what we've got because nothing is going to keep us from our God. We're going to go see for ourselves. And that's something that we have to do. We have to go see. And for us, how we go see is we don't need to look at the tomb, but study the scriptures. Read them in the Old and New Testament. Discover what God has to say. Read them. Go and see it for yourselves. Don't just listen to me. Don't just listen to the sermons that you hear on the radio or on YouTube or on television or in person, but go and see it for yourself. And that leads me to the second thing. Go and examine the evidence. Expect it. Listen, there is so much evidence out there that helps us understand that we're not just taking a blind leap of faith. Listen, the world itself testifies of God's creation. Look around. Look at your hand. Listen, I have watched my wife deliver five children. And I am telling you, just looking at the miracle of birth alone is evidence that tells me that God is real. And then when I realize something, that I've examined the evidence myself and I have discovered something that, that I want to encourage you with. You see, the reason why it's important for us to go and see is because what I had growing up was addition faith. It was faith that I had inherited. I was relying on the testimony of others that had encountered Jesus. I was relying on the testimony of saints of old, things that my dad had experienced, things that my mom had experienced, things that my pastor had experienced, but I hadn't. I was just listening to them, but I didn't follow what those ladies did where they went to go see and, and I never really fully examined the evidence. But listen, in Mark 6, 16, 16, 6, it says, but when he said, speaking of the angel to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, but he is risen. He is not here. And then the angel invites the ladies, come, see the place where they laid him. And guess what they didn't discover? Guess what they didn't see? They did not find a body. They did not see the body of their Lord. They came with spices in hand thinking if he is dead, he might stink and we got to do something about that. But if he isn't, wow. Friends, they went thinking they were going to find something dead, someone dead. But instead, when they examined the evidence, they came to the conclusion that Jesus is alive. And I've come to that conclusion on my own, that my faith of addition faith wasn't enough. I had to go and examine the evidence for myself. And God is big enough. I came with the heart seeking truth. I came with the heart seeking, God, if you're real, speak to me, reveal yourself to me. Because I needed him.
You see, I left my house as a young man with faith that I I had borrowed from my parents. At 17, I had began to realize that I need to have my own faith in God because I was running into problems and circumstances and situations where I needed the God of my parents to be my God. I needed Jesus to be real to me because the problems and the circumstances weren't my parents' problems and circumstances, they were my own. And I realized I'm not going to make it borrowing from my dad. I'm not gonna make it borrowing from my my mom. I need my own faith. And at 17, I examined the evidence. (laughs) And then God showed himself to me. He revealed himself to me through his word and he did something on the inside of me that is amazing. My sinful desires that came so natural to me All of a sudden, I I no longer had a desire to do the things that I used to do. So when I examined the evidence and I trusted in God and I repented of my sins, I realized that the God that these ladies went to seek with their own eyes 2,000 years ago is still waiting to be discovered by us 2,000 years later. You see, addition faith is wonderful introduction to who Jesus is. And parents, we need to do that. And in the workplace, in the marketplace, we need people to see our faith so that they will see the good works that we do, that they'll glorify our God who's in heaven. But ultimately, what we have to do is go and examine the evidence for ourselves so that our faith is not in the God of Peter or in the God of James or in the God of your mom or the God of your grandma, but it's of your God. And when you come to the conclusion that he is alive and he is, and when you decide to put your trust in him and you must, then you must do the only thing left. And that's go and tell others the good news. Once you have examined the evidence and you have discovered it, you've got to do like these ladies did. And Mark 16, 7, it says, but go and tell the disciples. And listen to these words here. It's so intentional. When when Peter is telling Mark to write this, he is making sure that this is included for you and for me because God made sure that this was included, that God sent an angel from heaven to be present for those ladies when they were there, knowing full well that those men were going to be in hiding and that Peter was someplace crying because he had dishonored his God. He broke his promise. But listen, it says, but go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee and there you will see him. And he said, as he said to you, what he is saying is this, listen, the good news is true for all people, even those who talk big. Listen, Lord, I'm telling you, I'll be a missionary for you. I'll do whatever you need. I'll do whatever. And when sin approaches itself or fear or an opportunity presents itself and we choose that thing instead of God, listen, God still says, I choose you. Peter, I know you denied me, but I choose you. I know you went into hiding. And so the angel says very carefully to these ladies, go and tell the disciples, all of them, and Peter, the one who thinks he's no longer mine, he is still mine. In fact, that is why I came. I came for the likes of the Peters in the world. Those people that have turned their back on me, I haven't turned my back on them. While there's still breath in your lungs, open your heart to me. Open your life to me. You see, friends, addition faith, it's not going to help you when it gets real. What we need is submission faith, where we put our heart and our mind and our soul and our very lives in the hands of Jesus. And this is why we're able to read this gospel. This is Peter's gospel, the good news of Peter. He says, listen, he he came for me even after I denied Jesus and I went into hiding. He said, go tell the disciples and Peter that I am gone forward, that I'm alive, and they too can be alive. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you through this message? Father, I pray, Lord, for those who find themselves like Peter, that they had a faith that was bold, 
But when it came time and it got tough, they denied their Lord. I pray that today would be the day that they would come home, that while we are waiting for our time to be with you, while there's still breath in our lungs, that we will choose, God, to go and see for ourselves, to examine the evidence, and to go and tell others the good news, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, if you are on that journey where you're like, you know what? I need to turn my heart back, right? I, I need to get some things right. Or if you're in a state of discovery and says, I am just now examining the evidence. Well, I want to invite you. If you're on a state of discovery, I want you to, to join with us in our May challenge. We're going to be reading through the Gospel of John, 31 days through the Gospel of John, starting in May. I want you to come hang out with us. And if you want help, if you want to want to give your heart your life to Jesus then I want you to text the word hello to 833-750-1352 or fill out a connection card so that we can help you take your next step of faith we want to help you grow in knowing who God is God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit we want to help you learn how to hear the voice of God that Jesus himself said my sheep hear my voice and the strangers they will not follow help you understand when you're hearing the voice of God or is it just your imagination that you can actually know God's talking to you and that you can trust his voice because God will never say anything to harm you, anything to keep you away from him. He desires that you walk in a path that pleases him, glorifies him, and is a blessing and a benefit for you. And ultimately, I want to help you learn how you can follow God. So join with us, connect with us so that we can help you take your next step.